Uh, testing audio one two three. Uh, testing audio three two one. I, I really need to say literally just one word and it's fine. But I do it that way. Because I do it that way. Now I do realize that singing um, copyrighted songs can get you muted on the VOD, but I think that doesn't really count as singing. And if I were cruel, I'd say it doesn't count as a song, but um, uh, but it's actually not a bad song. Okay, um, so oh, today's stream is brought to you by uh, me sitting here and talking into a microphone. I thought that was a funny joke to do. But now let's... Uh, I was actually going to do something else today, and then just sort of last minute, I read how people are saying that Sweden now has the world's highest death rate for COVID uh, in terms of in, you know, comparison to its population. Um, and, and, uh, and people are picking on Sweden because Sweden has actually decided to, to do the right thing, preserve people's civil rights, and not, you know, fuck them over like China or the United States has done. So uh, very, very, Sweden's a very good sort of a positive country for those of us who don't believe in uh, fascism or Nazism. Uh, so, it's good. so that means people who do believe in fascism and Nazism, of course, uh, have to defeat Sweden somehow. Now, if you look at the, um, so if you look now at the, uh, the numbers, of course, um, by country, I'm going to shrink this down even more, I guess. Um, total deaths per million population, see, right at the top there is not Sweden. In fact, you have to go to number eight. Which sounds bad, but if you actually look at the numbers here, they drop pretty quickly. But no, sorry, deaths. Yeah, they drop pretty quickly. So in fact, Sweden's not really that much higher than the U.S., and it is higher. It is lower than the U.K., Italy, Spain, and these three small countries. Well, Belgium is actually a pretty big country. Um, San Marino and Andorra, which don't count. So, so why are people saying this now? Well, some Mr. Uh, cocksucking smarty pants, statistics manipulating piece of shit. Uh, found out that if you look at the rolling average for the last seven days, Sweden has the highest death rate. Um, so now, of course, why would you look at it? Seven days sounds sort of nice because it's like a week. But the question is, what happens if you look at six or eight days or five or nine days? Is Sweden still going to be at the top or did someone actually work really, really hard to fuck Sweden over? And, and honestly, um, I don't have a position on what should be done with people who abuse statistics unless it falls into the category of fraud because abusing statistics, uh, unlike abusing children, is protected by free speech. So, gotta be a little bit careful there. No matter how angry I get, uh, these idiots have the right to be idiots. Okay, so now the question is, let's go ahead and look at the per population death rate of Sweden uh, or in, in other countries and average it out over an n number of days and see if this is really just a um, anomaly where Sweden happens to be the worst if you look at seven days but not you know eight or six or five or nine or whatever or because I don't do any preparation for this stream ahead of mouse nine wow I don't even know what that is um, but it's not defined um, because I don't do any preparation for the stream it's quite possible I'm going to find out that Sweden actually is the worst for six, eight, five, nine, and maybe even going back further. So I could really be screwing myself over here. Um, but that's how I roll. So now there's a, there's a few problems here that we need to, to take care of. Uh, oh, and let me go ahead and discuss what we're not going to be doing the rest of the stream. Now, what's really kind of weird here, and I guess I'm going to show this, I'm going to show the problem real briefly, uh, but not the, um, not the solution. Where am I? Okay, hang on. I think, I know I moved my maxima download, maximum manual download somewhere, um, but it actually, oh, did I, oh, I know what I did, hang on one second, I'm going to try to fix this, by the way, it turns out maxima, um, it turns out, mac oh, this is 5430, hang on. I hate my life. Okay. Um, so, by the way, I don't know why, search, why chat is doing this. I'm not going to be worried about it too much today. Um, because I'm just going to hope my... Well, let me, let me look at OBS. 
I'm just gonna hope my stream goes well. And if it doesn't, screw. It's not really that important. It's like you're not losing valuable information if I don't talk. In fact, probably made your day better. Now the problem here is this is the 542 manual which I've been using for some reason, uh, but I do have a, um, a 543 manual, and I'm gonna link it and something else that might fuck be useful. Uh, so I think this is this. And the other thing I want to do is, nope, let me, maybe I have it in the wrong place because, let's face it, I suck. Yep, it is in the wrong place. I'm going to move it to the right place on my main machine, then link it. So really, really, just really stupid stuff. Okay. So very quickly, I'll describe the problem. The problem here is if you look at this thing called RefMan16, which has a beautiful name that no one would ever guess what it's about, this is Maxima Mathematics and System Reference Manual 16th edition, and if you go down a little bit, you'll see that it is copyright 1996, which is a long time ago, though I was alive then and quite a bit before then, for that matter. So you would expect, because Maxima with an XIMA is a derivative of this, everything in here would be supported in in Maxima, the, uh, the, uh, the free version. But it turns out it's not. And one of the things um, it doesn't have, um, oh, hang on, be a little bit careful here. Okay, so a really simple function is give me the nth prime number, give me like the hundredth prime number. Now, if we do that here, and I keep forgetting I have to start screen I maybe want to start doing that inside of my startup after SSH uh, file. In fact, let me go ahead and do that because it's just a pain in the ass if I don't. So this is the file that runs after we've SSH FS mounted. Um, let's do that. Okay. Um, so if we just run our maxima here, just like you know, and we say prime of 45. Now this doesn't work. Now you might think, can I load something into maxima? that would make this work. I mean, because, you know, Maxima has a lot of sort of libraries and stuff that you can load into it. Um, in fact, I think my bclib.mac, oh, come on. It self-loads some other stuff because it, it needs that to be complete. So interpolations are elsewhere's descriptive stats. However, I looked on the actual, um, I'm not going to try to find it now, but I looked on their actual uh, website in SourceForge, SourceForge, and it turns out someone reported this problem, and then someone found a really terrible implementation of the nth prime, and then they closed the issue, and uh, they didn't allow it to be reopened. So either this isn't totally not happening, um, so either this they don't have this function at all, or I'm looking in the wrong place, or any. There's a lot of reasons this could happen, but but apparently they don't have it. Now it just now occurred to me because I'm stupid. Um, that maybe it could be interesting to look to see what libraries actually do exist for Maxima. Um, and one way to do that would be to find out where the hell it keeps its libraries. Um, so that that's always a fun thing to try to find. User share. All right, give me one second. I'm going to try to find it from here. I think I can. Uh, this is on the other machine where I know you. Blah 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 blah. In fact, let me see if I can find. On the other machine, I have something running that lets me um, that lets me search through all my files fairly rapidly, but it's not running on this machine. Whoa! That was not expected. Came up with a lot of results here. Um, so I'm looking for interpol.mac, which is, I assume, how it does the magic of, of adding interpolation functions, for example. What's interesting here is, okay, I don't actually think it's going to be here, but, yep. Let me create a, um, bad idea, but let me create this. Now, where I found it on the other machine is in, oh, wow, okay. It's in this tar file, but apparently, however the hell I installed it, it didn't actually use that tar file. So let me let me try to find it again. The problem is there's too many results, so I need to find one that is like the real one, so to speak. Um, oh, here we are. 
User local, okay, Jesus Christ. User local share maxima. Hello, Milkistramu, welcome to the stream. How are you doing, sir? That's okay. I mean, I missed you terribly, but also I didn't notice. So, you know, that's how it goes. So user local share maxima on the other machine, but on this machine, of course, there it is. And now I'm actually sort of curious. There we go. And let me actually make a note here. Um, and at some point I'm going to have a note command, but is where maxima keeps it's shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. And I actually... I don't think this is going to work, actually. Oh, ouch. Okay. The clever bit here is that CWD would have gone into... Um, would have actually gone into the, the doing file and, and interpolated. But let's go ahead and write it like this. Can find it uh, is where Maxima keeps its shit. God damn it! It's where Maxima keeps its shit. Now, for some reason, but it's shirt. That's fine. We'll go good place on this. I don't know why I keep saying welcome to the chat room for me, uh, Milkistramu. Uh, since you are the one person who may be watching my stream, let me know if there's any lags or gaps in my stream. For some reason, chat is being very weird. It keeps disconnecting and reconnecting me, but um, but hopefully the stream itself is doing okay. So now that we found this uh, piece of shit, let's see if we can find. Um, okay, the chat's being weird. How's the stream doing? The the part that's supposedly more important, although in my case it's not. Uh, so share numeric interpol.mac. Um, oh, awesome, the stream's doing fine. Okay, so now the question is, what the hell does this actually do? And does this actually... Is this actually written in, um... Is this Maxima written in Maxima itself? It looks like it. Um, oh, but some of these functions are written in other things, like in Lisp. Yeah, so FF, Fast Fourier Transform, is not written in Maxima, it's written in Lisp. Okay, which itself is written in God knows what. Oh, FFT Core Lisp. Yeah, this is, this is a nightmare. So anyway, let me try to find now um, something about prime numbers that maybe will give us some functions that we don't... Oh yeah, that didn't work at all. Um, let's see if there's something in number theory. Wow. Okay. So, um... Now the source is here. What the hell? Is this written in frickin' Lisp? I hate my life. Yep, it is, apparently, written in Lisp. Um, so I was hoping to extend this by finding the correct way of implementing the nth prime number, uh, a fast way of doing it, and then just putting it into C. But apparently... Um, wow. Okay. So let's, and this is, by the way, still in the, the part of the stream where I'm explaining what we're going to do in the stream, so we're really fucked. Uh, add nth prime to, I'm going to say maximum, but it's going to fuck me over here. Oh. Um, no, I actually want nth prime in its quoted form. Yeah, unfortunately, now we're talking about maxima, the word maxima. And not um, not the program maximum. So let's do this, which is the yay. 
I think this is where you find the one. Um, oh, hang on. Is there a capital prime function? If there is, I'd be very surprised. Nope, there isn't. So I think this is what I found earlier, which basically says it's not implemented. Um, um, what the hell is max prime? That's not helpful at all. Aha, but here's the clever bit. If there is a max prime defined, it's going to be in here somewhere. So let's find it. It's nowhere. And if there's an nth prime in here, yep, also nowhere. This should give us a few results. Um, less demo, demo dem. That's uh, largest. Well, that's not helpful. All right, let's see if we can look for prime with the parentheses after it as though it were a function. Yes. Uh, okay, next prime we already know about. And we know about prev prime. And this looks like, ah, this is bullshit. It's basically not gonna work. Uh, and if you look at this, it's gonna say basically, um, Let's see if we can actually put a, um, so maybe this is trying to compensate for the fact that, um, that this is not a complete, this is not going to work, that this is not a complete implementation of the old maxima. This is actually just a sub-implementation. So that would explain why some of these things aren't happening. Okay, so let me see what else I was pissed, what else, we still haven't started the stream technically. I mean, we have, but we haven't. Okay. Now, yesterday I was messing around with Fly, the program that is a libgd wrapper, trying to create very large images. Um, now, as it turns out, um, the version of Fly I have running on my main machine is different from the version of Fly I have running on this machine. So when I did some tests last night, I found out you cannot create GIFs um, that are larger than 65,000 three, six, uh, in each direction, uh, in either direction, actually. If you do, the it shows up as a negative dimension. However, you can create ping files that are larger, and not only did I do that yesterday, I, after using, I used this version of Fly to get that fixed, I actually went ahead and tiled it, and the um, image magics convert was able to tile it into a, a bajillion uh, 256 by 256 tiles, uh, and by bajillion, I mean like 88,000 or something, um, which now need to be organized as a tile map so we could put the whole thing into leaflet. But then I decided, uh, which I didn't put down here, but I decided, now that if we're gonna make this thing like 262,000 pixels wide, I'd like to add some more stars from uh, the HYG catalog. Right now we're only doing 8,912 stars. Um, Maybe I should put that down too, huh? And these are the ones that are um, down to 6.5 mag, I think. Um, and it's not hard now. I mean, back in the day, it was a bit more difficult. Now it's actually pretty easy for me to convert the HYG stars, all of them, uh, into ecliptic coordinates, put them on this uh, map, and then we can have a nice little star field. We can make the uh, brighter stars bigger. Right now, the size is 7 minus mag, so you know, the 6.5 magnitude stars, the 6 magnitude stars are of size 1. Um, so, also, we're going to try to create a clean version of the star map and then overlay the planets on it. And here's where we, um, uh, what you want overlaid. And the cool thing is it's not going to work. But if, if it did work, the cool thing is then we could have an HTML page where we show the, the raw star map and then maybe even with allowing transparency, which isn't hard, and then allow people to overlay whatever planet, you know, Jupiter 2020, Mars 2020, or Mars 2020, Mars 2021, whatever it is you want, 
and it'll just show the ones you want and not show the ones you don't want. Um, the real ugliness there is we're basically going to have tile maps uh, for every single uh, every single planet in every single year. 20, 20 tiles times, let's say, 8 planets, not including Earth, but including Pluto. 160 tile maps. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, we could do it. GitHub pages, I don't know what its limit is, but that, that's kind of chunky, a little bit chunky there. Uh, but who knows? We might do it. Another way to do it is... Um, uh, it is Pomodoro time, but I'm skipping it because it is the first one. Actually, it's not, but pretend. Um, actually, there's another way of doing this, which is you can overlay uh, m tile markers um, on 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 a leaflet map. Uh, but I get I don't think that's going to work for us here. Let me actually see if I can find where my free where my dink map is. I know that sounds really bad. Um, I do have, I think I, I know I created a map once, I put it up on the internet, um, and now I've lost it. <laughs> now, I, it still should be somewhere. Give me one second here. Oh. No. I said, oh, and then the O sort of fell away. Somewhere I do have a leaflet map. Um... That let's that is a basically a, a map of one game of of Dink, which is a, a free uh, game that was released for free. Um, and where it is, it's probably in. It's, I'm, I'm still looking for it on the other machine. Free Dinking. There's even a there's even a whole directory uh, here which actually might tell me where it is. Okay, let me actually look in the directory here. Um, so I, I really got into this once, and I don't know if I discussed this yesterday, but there's a, I think I did talk about this earlier. Um, and almost sure I did not bother to put down... Oh, hang on. Um, I might have mentioned it here. Boy, they. Um, um, and some of these subdirectories are big, so I'm not sure I necessarily want to, um, Look through them. I mean, if it is somewhere, it's got to be on test very hard to write info. Uh, let's. And I say that, and it's not necessarily true, by the way. But let's see if there's any dinking going on here. I love using the word dink. Dink, 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 dink. Dink, dink. Dink, 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 dink. Well, there's a directory called dink. That, that could be useful. Um, okay. These, I think, are the. These are the images. Yeah which is cool, but this is not how to get to them. Hmm. Do I, ha I do have some HTML pages here. Ajax. Oh, sorry. I meant to be looking for .html. Um, I, I don't... Oh! I'm pretty sure this is actually the wrong... No, this might be the right way. This might be it. Um... I use Google Maps for this one. So this is the a Dink game. Um, it's one that happens to be played... Well, these are some of the rooms that are in... That are not... Okay, so let me write this down real quick. Because that could actually be useful. But it's not working because Google Maps is, is broken in the sense that you need a license key for it, and I don't want to put one in. Um, kind of makes me wonder what the other ones do. Um, but, the, but the thing here I was going to say is... Um, oh, maybe I don't have it here. 
So this is this is just a very simple way of doing some image tiling. Uh, the the weird thing here is because um, we're using Google Maps, um, I had to put it on top of something else. I mean, I probably did it wrong, but okay. Well, this just tells hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? And I will not. This is just a tiling thing. Oh yes, this is it. Sorry. So let me make a quick note here. It's the same thing but better. That's technically a contradiction. But yeah, here's where I did it, and so this is the dink game, and I think I actually nope, I still have the little I think I got rid of the indoor tiles. So this is the game. Uh and in this game it turns out um you can go fuck yourself. the hell? Okay. And I think this is on, let me check, I'm almost sure this is on Google Maps. Um, no, it's not, it's on Leaflet. Score American. Um, come. God damn it. My world is too small, man. Alright, let me, let me try not to flick it away. For some reason it doesn't like me. Um, so you could imagine this as being, if it ever loads, by the way, uh, you could imagine this as being the blank star map, and you, you have to imagine it because it's not working. Let's do this again. There we go. Very, very careful in moving it. Nope, don't go anywhere. Don't go. Okay, nope, nope, nope. Zoom in. Okay. So this you would imagine as being the blank star map. Now, in this game, it turns out there's two things you need to find. Spaceship parts and silver pairs. So we do spaceship parts. Absolutely nothing happens. No, I think something did happen. What the fuck? Ah! Okay, let's try that again. Do we have to wait for it to finish loading? Maybe. And voila, nothing. what's supposed to happen is there's supposed to be marker showing you where the spaceship parts are and marker is showing you where uh, the silver pairs are. Uh, what, what, what's not happening... Um, let's go ahead and do a view source real quick. So, I don't know what the hell's wrong with my internet connection. I, I, maybe it's just this stream is taking... Um, I should be broadcasting it fairly... Let me check my resolution here. I'm not trying to broadcast at super high resolution. Um, 30 FPS. Uh, about two six again it could just be a lot of people are using the internet now blah 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 so now I'm back apparently so this is brass weevil solstice uh, is the name of the game the map is by there we go it would have been more fun if it had started without them so spaceship parts are right there so this is how you in theory could do a map where you could add Mars's orbit as a bunch of markers it's not really a great way of doing it though because um, Mars's orbit's going to have thousands of points, and the markers really don't work well for that sort of thing. So we're, I could have made these a different color, couldn't I? And by the way, the whole idea in this game, if you ever play it, it's it's not a bad game. It's called Solstice. It's the game called Solstice Inside of Free Dink, written by Brass Weasel. The idea here is basically you connect the spaceship parts. Once you've built the spaceship, you can cross the river. I don't think there's... I think you can fix this bridge somehow. And once you cross the river you can find all your silver pairs on, of course, the other side of the, of the bridge. So that was, that was kind of worthwhile. I don't know if that was worthwhile. That was the thing we just did. Okay. Um, and I think... Oh, yeah. No, there's more. We're not done yet. Um, did I? Easy list of primes, pi digits, etc. Uh, the idea, of course, is if you can create huge maps like this, you could also create uh, visualizations of the digits of pi or the prime numbers, or the um, or e, the uh, which is Euler's number, or even uh, the Euler gamma number, which is not the same thing as the Euler number, uh, is quite of interesting. And then somewhere in there, we had solar angles at one point. Now I've kind of forgotten all about that and time zones. Jesus Christ. I've done nothing, and using locale files to override dates, and then before that, uh, other count, that's all part of it, LD is all part of it. Um, yeah. 
So, I don't even know where the hell we are anymore. But, oh yeah, um, there's this really cool program that I'm, I'm not going to run here because it's very, very uh, P CPU con uh, intensive and it prefers to work on a machine that has a lot of CPU. It's called Y Cruncher, and it, it's, I'll go and Google it really quickly. And um, it's, a, it's a very nice program that actually lets you compute uh, as many digits of pi as you want fairly quickly. I got 500 million yesterday in a couple of minutes. Uh, obviously, I'm not hit, trying to hit the record 50 trillion um, or whatever, but uh, you know, and, and you can do them in hex or in decibel, kind of cool. Um, and the idea is, um, of course, you could then use something like some limited set of colors to display that. So, um, oh, and also, displaying every prime is not, I, this might, might have talked about this yesterday, displaying every prime is not really that great because um, uh, a lot of numbers are obviously not prime. So if you take the numbers mod 30, a lot of them won't be prime. So this would be a way of showing, I think I'm almost sure I talked about this yesterday. Um, not that I watched my own streams. Okay, so now, oh, this is what we're going to be doing. In order to see that Sweden is not as deadly as people are trying to make it out to be, but we need um, population data from Sweden as well, which I'm hoping, hoping is included in the uh, COVID-19 stuff. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and update that uh, on my other machine because that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then we'll look at it here in just a sec. And it's git fetch all git reset hard origin master. I don't know what that does, but it's the magic command that basically says, give me the data that they that they have. Uh, remotely and update it. So I am just a slave to their data. Okay. Okay. We're going to go see if anyone's talking to it. Hello, Rolf! 600... Oh, thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. 600p is pretty low, so I shouldn't be having um, a great deal of bandwidth going out from that. I, I don't know if it's if it's my bandwidth overall, because I'm getting a lot of stuff slow, or if it's just um, bandwidth on the internet, if my stream's doing okay. I don't... To be honest, I don't know what the hell's going on. Because, again, I got another welcome to chat room as though I got disconnected and reconnected. Um, I don't think I've got any other processes going that are sucking up a lot of bandwidth, um, except obviously, uh, except OBS, obviously. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's a little bit curious for me. Um, but if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Or if you want to see anything on the stream, just basically if you have anything. I'm a very, very lonely person. Very lonely man here. Um, so now the question is, do we get population data from any of these guys? Because um, if not, we'll have to find it somewhere. There, there are places to get it, but... Um, I think it's time series. And... We're only interested in death span. Um, I don't even think this is the file we're using. And it clearly doesn't have population. But okay, let's go ahead and go back to our um, the file that we were using. Um, our basic functions here. Um, okay, so this is the data we were using. Um, data country aggregated. It's in the lowercase version of COVID-19. Let's see. Okay. Confirmed, recovered, increase rate, which is not useful. So this doesn't have population data. Let's see what reference has. Oh, hello. Yes! Population data! That was not too bad. Um, blah blah blah. So this is not this. We can we can get we can we can do this now. Obviously, the population is changing, not just because people are dying of corona, because people are being born, leaving the country, entering the country, and probably I don't know. In Sweden, I think 
uh, you can merge plants and, and people will arise somehow. I don't really fully understand that. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this data here. Uh, no, 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 which is in, let's, this should not be hard. Um, so I want to be careful here. So I do not, so I think this is all within something called formulas. Okay, good. And then there's an end form. Okay. Oh, I need to reload this because I apparently changed some shit. Work here starts. Wow. Maybe I'm going backwards. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to basically uh, copy what we did here. And then if it works, we will actually. Uh, let's see. We will actually push it up to there where we can get to it. Um. I think it's just reference.csv. Um, just for fun, we'll call this map pop. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to look to see what we get from all that good stuff. So in order to do that, first of all, I think we're going to do it in this window. because, And it's going to be Maxima 2, because that's the one that does the automatic loading of stuff in formulas. Uh, maxima... Yada yada yada, this is taking too long. That shouldn't have taken that long. <sighs> Refreshing. So just to make sure we have it correct, the deaths US should give us a list of the deaths in the US through roughly yesterday. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I don't think there's anything deep going on here. Uh, oh, did I? Wow, I really have that. Okay, there we go. There, there's the whole thing. And, oh, come on, really? Well, it is only a reference, so I think we might... We don't really need the... the I wasn't even aware there were cities in Wyoming. It's a tiny little state. Okay, I was kidding. They're probably I probably knew that. Okay. Okay, so now we have to basically, uh, literally, I think we can um, follow this. Uh, so population is the thing that we're going to be trying to capture. Um, the only thing here that's probably not what I'm looking for is, uh, it's not necessarily the fifth thing in the, in the array. Um, this might be. This is almost at the point where you want to make this into a um, a function, huh? Um, and so the function here would be given two indexes of a uh, CSV list create an array that maps one of these indexes to another. That would be the sort of generic way of doing it. Let, let me see if I... These are regressions. Uh, days, deaths, make list, F name, F name, list plot. Um, and a lot of them I've moved, of course, over to uh, bclib.mac, which I, I thought I'd change that one. I guess not. Um... Calm. I was kind of tempted to do that. Uh, so if you have a CSV list, given a CSV list and two, given a file that has a CSV list in it, and two of the fields map one of the fields to the other and return the array that creates. need to remake the days array. All right. Oh shit, did I? Fuck. 
I edited the wrong part of the file. I'm an idiot. Now let's try to edit the right part of the file. Okay. So this should create an empty populations array. Um, and so now if I do this, Uh, did I just fuck that up? I might have. Uh, Pomodoro time, and this time I'm going to take it back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. And the Pomodoro worked uh, in the sense that I think instead of trying to do this, and we're also not going to go the other way with it and try to create a generic function that works with CSVs, but we can kind of do a halfway thing here. Um, That's fun. Okay. Um, now we should be able to get a list of all the, what they're calling country regions, combined key. Oh, come on, really? Oh, pop, yeah, population. And what do we want to marry it to though, I guess is the, is the question. Cause I was so excited it was like, Yay, we found it, but now the problem is if they're going to do like cities, which they are, we can't really, we can't, um, fuck, province, state, country, region, UID, so this is all good stuff here, um, but like for example, yeah, oh, this might be okay actually. So whatever this field is here, although the commas worry me. Uh, I might have found a way around that before, but the, the commas kind of worry me. Uh, but it maybe it doesn't matter because all the stuff we're actually interested in are country names, which... Yeah. All right. So I guess we're going to use what they call the combined key, and mm, the problem is it has to match the uh, the things we already have, which are like deaths U.S. deaths Belgium. <sighs> I'm not crazy about that actually. Um, but I mean, I guess if they're going to report. Something is weak. Something is um, something is funky here. So I, I guess somewhere in here we're gonna have data that's not from countries. Um, 
So why are they why are they giving us data that's kind of stupid? Okay, I guess I'm gonna see whether or not there's a combined key called US. Um, well, th that's it. That's our population, all right. All right, so it is gonna be combined key is gonna be the magic, and that is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I just realized that the commas in some other field might mess up. Ten and eleven. So what we want is the tenth element uh, of each row. So that that's the so this be ten. Just make sure that's the right one. Uh, and when I say ten, of course I mean eleven. I can't count. So in theory, if we take the not the inverse, um, not the console, not the converse. God damn it. We flip the rows and columns of Matpop, uh, which has a very simple name that I can't remember right now. Um, transpose. So if we transpose Matpop and take the 11th element of the transposition, we should just see a list of countries. Um, by which I mean we should not see a list of countries. And I think there's a reason for this. It doesn't do the transpose quite correctly. Uh, but this, that's, not, that's not too bad, actually. Um, we actually have a list of countries already, I think, that we created for some other reason. But let's do it a little bit better here, because it's possible this list of... Well, they're not really countries, but, you know, whatever they are. Um, so countries is make list I11 where trust me I know what I'm doing I11 um oh yeah wait where I goes from where I is a member of map pop oh yeah there it is I think this should be this should work even though it's not it's not indexing I I think this should actually um, do a one uh, did I do try to do a semicolon to suppress? <laughs> I'm an idiot. It's dollar sign to suppress. Anyway. Okay, this this looks okay. Oh wow, now, that was actually kind of nice. Um, and we don't we won't need that one, but it's there if we do. Okay. So now what we want to do is um. Oh shit. Yeah. Can we Actually, we might just be able to do this then. Population of and it's not going to be a function because it's going to memoize and set that equal to I12. This, I get the feeling, is not going to work. And we don't need anything in front of it then, because it's actually a, it's defining shit. So, population of US. Yeah. So, is population even defined? Okay, so I think the problem is I need to make population an array before we can do anything with it. Is I think, and I think that's what I did, literally did up here. Um, oh, here it was more difficult because I had to make each array index itself an array. And that is harder. So let's, I think here I can just say, um, population set it equal to an empty array. And then do this. And I think that'll work. Okay. Maybe I need to do this a little... Oh, actually, this is not quite what I want. 
Um, I, I need to indicate that it's going to be a um, it's going to be a hash. So I think really. I get the feeling this should kind of work anyway, but, you know. <sighs> okay. Let's see what population actually is. Um, is there an array info? I'm almost sure there is. Oh, okay, hang on. We've got some more shit here. Okay, didn't quite do what I wanted, but, um, no, 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 no. am I using the right form here? Because maybe I'm not using the right kind of form here. I'm doing something. I'm doing something that's so confusing, I have no idea what the fuck it is. That. Sure, why not? So it appears what I've created is a list of lists of countries. But for some reason, I can't... Uh, uh, hang on. I know what's wrong. Maybe. There's another function that gives you information about an array that I never remember. Because it doesn't begin with array. It's just one of the little list array. Let's see what happens if we do this. This maybe will tell us what's going on. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Maybe if I did this, this is... Or we're just going to start over again. Uh, which is actually not a bad idea, because we, we did actually try to define population multiple times. So, clean start here. I'll get this in here. And... I want this to work. It won't, but I want it to. Yep. Aim it didn't work. Well, that wasn't too bad, actually. So let's see, is there a population four? There are a population of Canada, which, by the way, Canada is fictional, so that wouldn't be... <coughs> Excuse me. Let me quickly um, see what this gave us. If there's... Oh, Jesus. So, I mean, I don't think this is the problem, but, um... I might have done this backwards. I mean, according to this, I might have done this backwards. Let's see. So this... Nope, what if I put it in quotes? If this gives me an answer, I'll be really unhappy. Okay, no. Alright, um... So now... We are going to, so the map pop is a huge, yeah, 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to do it on a subset of Matpop. And the way to get a sublist is, um, I think, f I want to use the, I want to use take Matpop5. I'll do that. That doesn't work, but if I do first Matpop5, that should work. Oh. Okay, that looks a little bit confusing, but that's correct. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to add a nice little alias for myself here, because I'm getting kind of, I already did this for the float function. Um, the first in. Yeah. And I'm going to do it now for the, um, so now I can just say take. Matpop5. Um, oh shit, I did it backwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, obviously it just alias its own functions out against itself. And we're going to do that again. Kind of bugs me how long it takes to load. Um... I kind of want to test the take function without going through all this, but I think we can handle this. Take map pop five. There we are. So now we're just going to do it on a subset. Because it's not working, and whenever something doesn't work, you do it on a smaller subset, it still won't work. But the cool thing is, it's fun. Okay. I don't know why this was the result of it, but okay. So now I should be able to say array info population and not get something hideous. Okay, good. Hashed one. Afghanistan. Okay, this, so far this isn't, this is okay. The only problem is, am I going to get a... So I think one issue here is going to be... The U.S. isn't going to work because we don't have it yet. Okay. Now the bad thing is, I'm pretty sure if I do Death Sandor, it's not going to work. So there's a difference between this... And with that, so I need to I need to put quotes into it basically. I need to tell it, I don't really want to. Um, I really want this I eleven thing to be quoted. I don't really want to make it. Um, I want the keys to be strings. Is it list a string? Oh, is that why I did that? Um, of course, this isn't really a list. It's a single object. But I think oddly enough, I think it'll actually work because I think I I designed it. Um, to work with um, things that are not actually strings. Yeah. Things that are not actually lists. If, if it is a list, it'll still work. Oh, this is actually if there's more than one. And Dora, maybe. Okay. So this is just going to be BC list to string of I11. So this is what I want here. All right, so it's my party, and I should be able to cry if I want to. Nope. Oh yeah, now now we probably need to do it for like the whole list, not just. I'm gonna go ahead and save this before I forget, even though. Meaning I'm gonna get get push it to get, get get. Okay. And now I'm gonna go crazy with this, and I think we can actually. just do this as part of the load up strategy and da, 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 don't need any of this shit anymore all right let's see what that, that, that does booyah 
Wow, we have a lot of people in our country. Okay. So now, now we're at step one. I wonder how many people are in Sweden. Probably not a lot. Yeah, that's about 10 million people in Sweden. And now we see how many of them are dead. Keep forgetting, of course, the deaths is the whole array. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are still not back. And we're back. Okay, so these are the cumulative deaths. Obviously, we want the um, the new deaths. We want the last seven of these. I'm wondering if this is this is probably not going to work. Um, uh, we want the average of that. I think there's there better be a mean function. Yeah. Really? It's an even number? I'm kinda curious now if there's a sum function. Nope. I guess that looks okay. I kinda didn't expect that actually. Yes, I know. I'm one of those people who has to check the spreadsheet by adding up the numbers by hand. I mean, I guess this could be... Um, yeah, it is. Okay. Alright, so that's 53 deaths on average over the last seven days. Uh, and then that's going to be over the population of Sweden, which is a very small number. Um, but, since it's per million people, we're going to also multiply that by a million. And then, of course, we're going to do this. Except we're going to do it the, the correct way. Alright, so over the last seven days, Sweden has had a 5.248, let's say, uh, deaths per million population per day. Obviously, we, we don't want to single Sweden out. I mean, we are singling Sweden out, but... But obviously we want to make this for anybody. Um, so let's do, so this is just the example. And let's see, so what we want to do here is, do we have, a, we should have a list of countries. I mean, that just seems like it would be really, really useful to have. Do we have a population of the world? I mean, we do, but do we have it here? If we do, that'll be really, no, nope, no, nope, nope, world. Damn it. We can compute it if we had to, but for the moment we're not going to. For the moment we're going to pretend we're happy. Let's just pretend we're happy. 
Okay. So. Da -da 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 -da. Um, we want to do this. So we do want a list of countries here, and I think um, I think we can use array keys for that, which is a function I created. When I say I created it, I mean I did not create it. Oh, maybe did I call it BC? Did I decide to be like really? Uh, keys, just, yeah, there we go. Because calling it array keys would be far too useful. Um, okay. So I think this is actually going to give us what we want, which is a list of all the countries. Yes! <coughs> I'm kind of wondering, for countries that have multiple names, have I actually effed this up? No, I haven't. Cool. Uh, why, the world might not be listed in references. Actually, let's take a quick look at that. Yeah, they don't have the world. I mean, the world would have, you know, if you really wanted to do this, we could do minus F comma and look at the last field and sort it by... Um, and sort it by the, you know, how big it is, but I mean, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and that, that's a single, that's an easy addition we could make if we had to. Okay, um, so we have the list of countries, which I think we can just assign it like this. Um, to be array... Let me go ahead and put this alias into here. Array keys of debt. One of these days. Okay. And that probably should actually be going... Um, that's something we should actually be doing each time. So let's go ahead and put it inside of our... Every time we load, we're going to do that. Okay. So now we're going to write a function that gives you the um, mean number of deaths in the past n days. Okay. Mean deaths days takes country and n um, do I want to make this uh, a memoizing function uh, I might actually just because that, that'll be a little bit faster I think I don't know if this will work by the way um, so basically it's this Except here we have country. And here we have N. Now the odds that this are gonna this are gonna work. The odds this is gonna work is so low that I would bet against myself here. Okay. Well, 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 that's a little bit too convenient. Crap, I hate when stuff like that just works. Um, fuck. Okay. I don't think I can... Uh, this won't work because obviously it's not defined yet. So I need two arguments. Well, that was a little bit too easy. Um, okay. Well, first of all, let's confirm that uh, uh, Sweden is the worst for seven days. And then let's look at eight and six and see if this is a... This is a horrible blunder that people have made in order to... Um, I7, where I is a member of countries. This is actually not what I want to do, but let's do it just to show that it, I can do it. Okay. Interesting. 
interesting. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of is like, like I got like a bad country in there somehow. Uh, but let me. Honduras. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Seven. Okay. All right, let's do this now real quick. This is going to break. That's fine. But let's see if it works on the first. Okay. So it's not a pr There's a problem in the list. Ooh, okay. We can even find it using... If we wanted to, we could find it using binary search. Um, and I think the problem is going to be that we either have a country that has uh, zero population, or not really, but it's just the way it's written or something. Okay, now I'm kind of curious just to track it down. Okay, 43, 44. Okay, so what is the 44th country? Cota de Avare. Aha. The 44th country is country. That's the header line, obviously. And I'm going to bet you this is not either going to be zero. It's not going to be that I did not expect. Um... Now the weird thing is I'm gonna guess that actually this is this is the Ivory Coast. Oh dear. That didn't work. So Costa Rica. Si es bueno. Okay. So somewhere in here we, we got we got we got messed up, but let me actually do something a little bit even stupider. We really don't want just the mean death days because it doesn't. We, we we actually need to keep track of the country also. Um, so we actually want a list that is the country, and the uh, mean death days. Now in theory we could make this into an array, but because I want to be able to change the seven here, we're not going to quite do that. So this is not going to work. And it's going to look like this. Okay. So great, it even works for the frickin' Ivory Coast. But it doesn't work where the, um... What I don't understand... Oh, the population of country should be population. Anyway. And the problem, of course, here is that it's... You're not gonna be able to divide by it. So what do I want to do here? Is there an is numeric function? Is number, is planar, is vertex and graph. Let me try something here. What if I try to take the floating point value of something that doesn't have one? Okay. So this should be actually really easy. I mean we could just eliminate country from the from the list, but that's not probably the right thing to do. Um Let's see if we can use the... Oh, shit. Didn't mean to do that. I wonder if we can use the if statement here. Um, uh, population country. I mean, there should be a way to just... stupid. Yeah, that, that's that's the problem, all right. Come on, really? Give me a function that is... 
Numerical. What does the function numerical do? Uh, probably not what I want. Okay. Oh, number p. Booyah. Um. So. I'm going to save this before I mess with it. Now I'll mess with it. I think we can just add a very simple um, if. Is it number P? Number P. And, uh, no, not in. Deaths of country. Then do this, otherwise return zero. And I'm 99% sure this is going to fail, because I'm not using if correctly. Told ya. Uh, do I have an if then in here anywhere? Oh. Then. Now, whether or not I can do this inside of a function is kind of a... Uh, oh, I guess I did do it in a function there. All right, so this should work. So, mean death days of country. I hate my life. Okay. So, that really should not have been that big of a deal, but now let's do this. Yay. By the way, there were zero deaths in the world, so it's very, very exciting for us. Um, uh, wait a minute. Did I mean deaths list destroyed? No. Oh, shit. No, I... <sighs> I'm an idiot. I could have also used deaths as an array. I could have also used the last element of deaths, but um, okay. This does not seem correct, but maybe it is. I'm never going to get that right. Okay. So, deaths of India, we have a population of India. This might be the problem. No, we have a population of India. So, we should be able to compute the function mean death days. Unless, of course, because it's a memoizing function, doing it wrong once broke it. Yay, I suck. Okay. We probably need to define this first. Oh. Okay. And then that looks a little bit better. Okay. Um So now what we can do is we can sort this and we can sort it, you know, by using the second uh parameter, uh the the number of of deaths per day uh in in millions. Um, so the United Kingdom is up there, so this is, this is where we're getting close to seeing whether it's all a big scam, and if it's not, uh, you have my best wishes, Sweden. So let's see, I, I know I've done sorting in a, nope, totally wrong. <sighs> Fuck me. Um, literally, I've not done sorting at all. Uh, I don't believe that. Um, let's see. Um, uh, you know what? I'm going to actually cheat a little bit here. Because I know I've done it. Hmm. I'm, you know, I'm being gaslighted, I think. People are just deleting my files. All right. 
Let's go ahead and look it up in the... Um, this is actually not a bad thing to do because we kind of want to do this anyway. Home user doc... File. Uh -huh. There we are. Maximus in the page. Alright. Sort. Okay. Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back, and we're back. And I did get a sort of intelligent idea, uh, which is um, if we made this list backwards, we could probably get away with using regular sort um, instead of having to kind of try to figure out the second, the second key sort. And honestly, this could probably become the function we use. Okay. Okay. Now, can I sort that? That was a very sharp whistle. Okay, what's interesting here is if you look at this data, it looks like United Kingdom is still actually uh, has, it has it worse than, than Sweden. Um, so I don't. My data should be fairly current, actually. Um, let's take a look at and the problem. Here is going to be they're using different data. Um, the Telegraph. I don't know how reliable of a newspaper it is. And again, this is not, this it seems like this is what people want Sweden to have the worst death rate because they want uh, a, a, a restrictive government. They don't believe in freedom. They all suck. Um, the past, see, this is, this is not actually true. Uh, but I mean, it, it could be using a different, according to Oxford data, Oh my God, I want to copy this. So here we go. Not only do you have to go to a week, you also have to use a specific set of data and you can't, if you use another set of data, um, it won't work. <laughs> you gotta love this. If you, use, if you use the right set of data in the right way and you, and you don't do the X and you do the Y, then Sweden is dangerous. So we've debunked that, but now let's take a look at something else. So even even with a week, it's not. Uh, but let's now let's see what happens if we do six days. Do we actually get? Yeah, and see this is where you're going to see the um, this is where the statistical line comes in. If you do six days, Sweden's in third place. 
Um, it's, it's not great, but I mean, it's not that much higher than the United States. United Kingdom and Ecuador are higher. If you do it over eight days, oh, that's not good. Crap. Let's pretend it didn't do that. Okay, so over eight days, Sweden is the worst. So maybe that's how they got those numbers. Um, over nine days. Okay, not looking too good for Sweden now. Over ten days. Yeah, maybe I should stop doing this. I'm killing more Swedish people. Okay, but if you go back to eleven days, Sweden's once again down to third place. So, and clearly if you go back far enough, Sweden's going to be very low, but that might just be because it, it hit Sweden a little, a little bit later. So, 12 days, third place. This is not actually looking too good for Sweden, but... Oh, 13 days, Sweden's back on top. 14, Sweden, 15. Belgium hits number one, which is actually not surprising because they actually have a very high rate. At some point, we might end up seeing, like, San Marino or something. Okay, so this is not actually proven what I wanted to prove. 17, it's also Sweden. Um, so I'm sad. Belgium. Let's look at the last month, which, because April has 30 days, is 30. Uh, and Sweden is in third place. It's higher than Andorra, which is kind of sucks. So let's look at the last two months, because, because March had 61 days. And there we see Sweden is is safely down uh, below the others. So not not great necessarily. Um, not really crazy about that. Let's see what happens if we go to ninety days. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, not as fantastic as I'd hoped. But there you go. That's how we do some. Um, That's how we do a little bit of analysis using uh, using uh, Maxima and getting our average. And uh, so yeah, let's do this. I'll go ahead and make this eight because I do want to be f do want to be fair to them in saying that yes, what you did. If you made the calculation yesterday, you, you might have gotten more. You know, we would have obviously said the l we, the problem is we have in one extra day worth of data, which we could get rid of if we gave this two parameters. We said you know from day end to day M, but I'm not going to do that because it's probably going to show Sweden's Sweden's up there. Um, now, the U.S. is actually pretty high, too, 4.2, um, 6.4, and, you know, so it's not it's not great. And I and I get the feeling some countries, and I'm not going to accuse any countries because, you know, I don't like accusations, but maybe they're under-reporting a little bit. I don't even know what accent that was. I was trying to do Italy, and they kind of slid into nothingness. Let me try that again. Buongiorno, buongiorno, buongiorno. We here in Italy, we, we do not lie about our numbers. We, we have a COVID the cases, and we report them. And then we make the pizza. Okay. Uh, about in Canada, uh, uh, we... Canada has a surprisingly high rate, actually. Didn't know that. See, si, senor. I don't even know how Dutch people talk. Airi. All right. Um, so there is some evidence that Sweden is pretty high on the list, but um, two things to keep in mind. One is it's not necessarily the highest every day, and the other thing is it's actually not. I mean, you know, if we divide these numbers, it's actually not that high overall. Yeah, I mean, 47% higher, but I mean, you know, a lot of it is density and stuff, so I say Sweden, keep doing what you're do doing, yodel along. I, I don't know if they yodel in Sweden, that's just a thing I like to say. Um, okay. I might end the stream now, but let's see. Um, yeah, and... I'm going to quickly see if there's an efficient way to calculate the nth prime number. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. 
Now this obviously does it the wrong way. Um, the straightforward way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trial division. This is the problem with... I'm going to bookmark this. Prime numbers maxima maxima. That's right. I do both. Okay. Um... Well, yes, this is actually... Wow. Run false here if you already know this. Um, but this is still computing all of them, which I don't think is the best way to do this. Um, Wow. If this still doesn't actually this still requires testing all the numbers. Jeez, this is a good good answer though. Uh okay. This is what I want. Um Oh my god. So this is the prime pi function, which I'm aware of. Um, yeah, what the hell is this, guys? Let's let's look at this. This sounds, well, not this sounds stupid actually. Um, hopefully, when it loads, this will go into tech. Simple way to find uh, pi of x. A more elaborate way is to use uh, do the Legendre. Um, here we are. Let's go directly to it. Oh my god. I mean, we could do all of this. Wow, so maybe we should just stick with next prime. Um, okay, now next prime might require something be loaded. That's probably not a big deal, though. I think it's one of the number theory things that um, that has to be loaded. And do I did I screw this up again? I think I did. Um, let's go ahead and put this into a pin. Let's go ahead and. Did I not even bother to um, bookmark this? I'm an idiot. Okay. And apparently I got... Oh, it is, it's just this. Okay. Um... All of these things, some of these might be able to find, um, some of the, I mean, there's so much crap here, you would think one of these would be able to give you the nth prime fairly quickly. Um,
the Chinese remainder theorem. Um, see, the problem is you want to compute. Fibonacci, Fibonacci to Fib, I factors. These are all really cool functions, uh, which I'm guessing you could use to find either the prime pi function uh, or the nth prime function pretty easily. Um, Oh, okay, so this still wouldn't work because if we want to know the millionth prime, we don't know where to, where to look for it. Um, now, the totient function is another way to find whether a number is prime, but it's probably very inefficient. Okay. Lots of... This is surprising they don't have something this simple. Um, which is five. Okay. So let's really briefly... Um, this is definitely doesn't belong inside of the COVID stuff. Um, what, what is the comment character again? I don't think that actually matters, so I'm not going to be... Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I can do both ways. Okay, cool. Um... Question mark. Okay. Um, I'm almost sure that's not going to work because I is not defined yet. do like this, I think this will work. Um, now, th the, the loop variable here is irrelevant. We're just basically saying we want to do this 100 times. And I get the feeling this is not what I want to do. Yeah, and the problem is I is bound here. Um, okay. So we really want here is a for loop. I don't know if, I don't know if the language supports that. Because we don't need to keep track of the intermediate ones. So let's see if we have a for loop in this language here. Or actually we could just use loops, I guess. Loops. Um. Ah, here we are. Oh yeah, this 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 is this is looking like what we want. Nice. And the variable lives after the loop. So now So we can actually copy this. Uh, we can say p is 2 for p from 1 to 1,000. Do p becomes next prime. This is almost exactly uh, what they're doing. And then, you know, p. All righty. Let's see what this does. p form. Not from, but form. Um, through, not not two, through. Go with that uh, math. That was pretty quick, actually. Didn't work, but, but but you know, other than that, it was pretty quick. All right, let's see. Oh shit! Is the next prime function? I think it is. No, that should work. 
Uh, and of course I meant to say not you know, P, that would be stupid. From I, 1 to 1,000, do this. Okay. You know, Mr. Smarty Pants. Um, now, of course, what I need to do after this is return P. Can I do that? And say, so after all this, just P. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Um, yeah. So if this works... Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, the problem is, of course... Okay, that's really fucking fast. There we go. The 100,000th prime takes a few seconds. And if I do it on Mathematica... I wonder if Mathix has a function like that. Uh, oh, it does. Okay... But it takes forever to find the millionth prime number. One, two, three, four. Five. Yeah, it's uh, Mathix does this faster than um, than um, whatever the hell we're running. Maxima does this, so it's still slow, but it. And I get the feeling the way I did this. Um, I'm off by one. Yeah, so I think the first prime is not three. So I think I've said P is one. Yeah, okay, there we go. So let's make sure we get the same result. Ten thousandth prime is this. According to this, the ten thousand prime is also that. According to math, well, actually, it's not going to matter. So it slows down a little bit once you get to like a million. Um, one way to do this would be to have it memoize. Um, okay. And let's see how long Mathix takes to do that. I mean, I didn't really count, but... Okay. Get the same answer, at least. And now, how long does Mathematica take to do this? So this is uh, this is where I get the feeling it's going to be much, much faster. Yep, it took so little time, um, it, it's effectively zero time. Okay. So the sort of interesting question, though, is how does Mathix... Since Mathix is open source, we might be able to use Mathix's method of doing this. Um, I don't know if I want to canonize this as a function, uh, because it's obviously going to be very, very slow if we go to, like, 10 million. 
And Mathematic, again, just instantly does that. Um, and I guess I could look at Mathematica. If the prime function is itself written in Mathematica, we might be able to do something. If it's written in some other language, um, uh, then we probably can't really do anything. Um, but maybe we won't do that right now. So this is... This is <coughs> We usually put a cap on this function, um, but I mean the problem is this is not going to be super efficient, um, no matter how we do it. Although it doesn't keep anything in memory, I mean it just keeps going. Um, if it's whoa, slowing down, the, slowing things down a little bit. Um, so now Mathix, because it is, I think I'm going to just kill this. Um, and we have Mathix here, I don't know why it was like... So this should, I mean, this is going to take a few seconds, but it's going to not take forever. I'm guessing, I don't really know now that I think about it. Okay. It is going to take forever. Come on, baby. Yeah, that was a mistake. Okay, and apparently once it does memoize, so that it really isn't that fast at computing prime of one million, uh, but it memorized it. So this. Uh, apparently it's going, okay. And so then, okay, so we, we have this, and we maybe can make it. Um, but I'm not terribly excited with it. I'm going to go ahead and push it to git, though. Okay. Um, not, not, not terribly exciting. Um, and apparently the way Mathix does it may not be that exciting either, but I'm kind of curious. Um... And now, of course, is the um, user Mathix? No. User share Mathix? No. User local share? It's just. Please stand by. I'm going to look for it on the other machine. See where it puts its shit. Um. Is it in a lid somewhere? I'm, I'm looking now and... Um, okay, so it looks like there's a home Mathix, but I don't think we have that here. Um, var Mathix, maybe. Nope. Uh, um, local lib. Yeah, this is easy to remember. But the sad thing is, I don't think it's going to have what we want here. Um, built in. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see if we can find the word prime anywhere in here. Oh, shiny. All right. Returns the nth prime number. Um, oh, it uses SymPy's prime function, um, which is great because I don't know how that works either. Okay, so I think the answer here is. Um, we have an implementation of the prime function. We could also do prime pi if we wanted to. Um, and that would be really, really ugly. Because, I mean, the one, I mean, the one way to do it, which it's so bad I don't even want to write it down. Um... Uh, let's
let's see. So this would basically be the number of primes less than a hundred. Less than a thousand, less than ten thousand, less than a hundred thousand, Jesus Christ, less than a million. There we go. Ten million, this is gonna freeze. And again, the prime pi function should be computable fairly quickly. It's actually not bad. Um, wow, I mean, <laughs> that's surprisingly fast, actually, uh, for something like this. Um, so the question is, can I do it without using up all that memory? Without, because this asks for basically every prime between two and 10 million, all 664,579 of them. But, could I use a trick like I used before? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you could, right? You could just do this. Um, um, we don't even need an initialization for this loop. Oh, we do because we need we need a count. Um, what does prime Q N return actually? <sighs> Shoot me! Oh, that doesn't work. It has to be. Prime, prime P. Unlike Mathematica, they use prime K. Um, nice. Got some. Got some. Uh, oh, this has a maximum mode. Nice. Um, if prime P, I then. Um, n goes to n plus 1. Do we need an else at the end of this? Uh, I get the feeling this is going to not work. <whistles> Holy crap. Uh, let's, let's pump that up with a couple of zeros there. That's that's gonna slow it down a little bit. And again, we could memoize here and just remember which ones are primes. So once it's done, it it doesn't have to keep. Yeah, I think we're gonna kill this one. Um, but up to a million, it might be okay. Hmm. I can't tell if that was any faster than doing the length of uh, all the primes between that two and the number. Okay. So I'm not really crazy about this. Uh, now, of course, another way to do stuff like this is to actually um, have the data in a file somewhere and, and just have maximum. I mean, that's cheating, but, you know, that's... That's life, basically. It's a database. Life is a database. Um, so the question I guess we want to ask is, can, um, can Maxima do file seeking? Because if it can, we could actually help it out with some data files. Um, so let's see. File, input, and output. Um, that's not what I asked. Okay. Wait, what, what the hell? Oh, comments and then files. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anything that says seek in here. I kind of wish I could have didn't do that because I just remembered that's not going to do what I want. I was going to hope in Emacs, if you start an iSearch and you kill it, it goes back to where you were. 
uh, but not not in Firefox. Okay. Append file batch. <coughs> Excuse me. Batch load close file. This is the transcript file. File output append. File name merge file. Aha! Nope, just searches for the file, not in the file. Uh, okay, that's not very interesting. File type. File type list. File type maxima. Load. Again, that's not what I want. Load path name. Um, the other option here is can we, um, if we can take external programs run them and have them pull the input into uh, into Maxima, that would be also very useful. Load path name, load file, load print, directory, I don't think we're going to be able to print file, save, seek inside of a file, string out, width stood out, write file, yep, we can't do that. I mean, if we can, it's not uh, seek, let's just see if there's a um, Three matches, none of them useful. Okay, let's see if there's a way to um, uh, to run an external program using uh, using Maxima, and we might have to go to the internet for this one. Um, runtime environment. Okay, this might be. Um, so these are all the packages. We could have just looked at this list, and none of them say anything about prime numbers. Uh, so I think the thing that might help us the most here is advanced facilities. Um, okay. Oh, so we can actually create a maxima init.mac file. Let's actually put that down. That that could be useful information to have. Um, okay. Interrupts. That's we we know about that. Where Maximum puts its user directory room. Shiny. I'm kind of kind of curious what that does. Wow, that's kind of cool. Not what we want. But it is still kind of cool. S status system features. Status. Very cool. Oh, here we go. So it is system time, uh, all, so that's also like Mathematica's times function. Time date, that's a good function to have. Um, I know, time date's the least interesting of them, but I'm going to do it. Shiny. 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 Okay, that's enough. Okay. Can I assign a variable? you can run the command I mean I guess you could run the command redirect the output and then read in the file that is the output so that that's fucking annoying though um, actually having to do system itself is fucking annoying because even if you could write a process that seeks inside of a file um, this would take forever to get it uh, because you have to call system each time which means you actually have to do um, you actually have to um, a system. The system itself is very ugly. The system, okay. Okay, now hist out. Okay, so where? Now, I mean, there's tons of ways to do it in other systems, like um, the backtick. Yeah, but that's not going to work here. There's even exec, which I don't think is going to work here either, actually. Yeah. And this just assigns A to the exit value, which is not very useful. Um, I don't think this is going to have, like, pro pros Process open, process close. These are all sort of newer concepts. Well, not really newer concepts, but uh, 
Uh, let's see. So I, mean, I could even give it a stood in, but I mean. So did this did, did this automatically create um, a hist file of some sort? Uh, no, maxima history is obviously not. That's just the history of what I put into maxima. Shiny. Pomodoro time. Let me see how long I've been going here. I might. Yeah, over two hours. Uh, let's go, I'll go ahead and take this Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. Um, let's look at some of these other functions, see if they'll help. Uh, time, time date. Parse time date, that's kind of nice. Oh, now are we actually, no, encode date. Okay. I get the feeling we've moved past. Um, no, I guess we haven't. We're still within the. Um, we're still within the special functions. Decode time, <laughs> absolute real time, absolute real time. <laughs> That's like you can't possibly disagree with this. Um, okay. Elapsed drill time, elapsed run time. Ugh. And then we're out of this and into miscellaneous options. Let's see. I get the feeling this isn't going to work. Um, ooh. This is interesting. Is there anything in here that's actually useful, though? And is this just telling me the stuff that's already loaded? So this is vaguely shiny. Okay, that was interesting, but not quite what we're looking for here. Um, so these are variables, so ask yes, but it doesn't even need a, um, that might be totally pointless. Gen index, okay, gen sum num, gen sim, package file, rem value, oh, okay, remove value, rn combine, Set up auto load TCL out, but that's interesting. That could actually be kind of. I mean, TCL is still used by like one person. Rules and patterns. This is how you would define functions and stuff. So this is uh, this is. We're now past the. Um, def rule, disp rule. That yeah uh, okay. So let's let's do this here. Um. 
Maxima communicate with processes. That's uh, inner process communication. That's actually probably what I meant to do. Uh, and I kind of get the feeling this might be another one of those things where Maxima doesn't do it. Uh, which means that there is something called Maxima out there um, that is different. Let's just go with really big funk here and say IPC. Nope, too fancy. And, oh, well this is a little snippet of a book here. And while it's looking for that, Maxima uses them for inner process communication. Okay, good. So there is a thingy here. I mean, it's not going to load ever, but you know, it's kind of a minor issue. Um, okay, I'm going to have to get a bigger monitor and a bigger VM uh, thingamajudy. I'm still not really where I need to be. Still not where I need to be. Jesus Christ. Now. Now I should be near where I need to be. Um, I would... No, I do not want to try the new Google Books. Okay. Wow. That was just... Well, hopefully this has gotten a better answer for us. Okay. Um, meh, 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 meh. Where are we talking about inner? Okay. Okay, Unix domain sockets. I know what those are. I have... Bizarrely, I don't think I... I well, you know what? Who knows? Maybe. Really? Here we go. All right. So maybe we could find a way to socket, socket to me. Um, so X maxima is a graphical, so that's kind of, that's it. It's literally the only match. Okay. So if you want maxima to read data externally, you kind of have to shove it into a file and read the file back. Still nice that you can do it from inside Mathematica, Maxima. But extremely sucky. Ugh. That you cannot do more with um okay, you know what? Let's let's go a little bit further. File seek in Maxima. I don't think we're gonna get anything. Um in fact we probably need to use file seek. <laughs> oh, come on. Virtual basic symbol file, complete list of... I almost am sure this is not what we want. I also don't like the fact that, I mean, I guess everyone knows this. Google checks what you, where you're going before it sends you there, and it redirects you. Okay, so let's look. I this is not going to be what we want. Yeah. Okay, well now let's get all clever about this and let's go ahead and put this into a pinned tab. Um, how to extend Maxima without learning Lisp? Um. Actually, let's say write Maxima extension. And from the looks of it, it's not easy. 
Um, you know what? I might have to say right maximum extension. And I get the feeling this is going to totally... Oh, hang on. Oh, that came up pretty quickly. Is it Google's just having trouble with its redirector? Um, okay, so yes, you can obviously um, extend Maxima with itself. That, that we've already done. Um, ooh. Is work for advanced users. Now the question is, can you do it in C? I mean, even Lisp itself has to be something. So is this not telling us anything we don't want to know? Do I want to learn Lisp? And if so, which version of Lisp are we going to be learning? And, and the answer to that question, by the way, is no, I do not want to learn Lisp. Um, because even Lisp itself Let's do a quick look to see where here we are. Uh, let's see. This is going to return too many results. Uh, in fact, I think I want to find an easier one of these. Um, conjugate may not be too bad. Complex conjugate. I'm hoping that's what that is. Uh, well when I'm only pretending to understand this. Okay. Unfortunately, so the cool thing is I could probably create a Lisp thing that does nothing but access a file. Um, I mean, when I say that, and I probably couldn't. Um, but I mean, just, um, but the question is, do I have Lisp? Um, so how would I run this? Do I have Scheme? I don't think I have Scream. Um, do I have Sassel? Different kind of Sassel. Okay, let me see if there is a, a, a Lisp interpreter out there and one that understands this kind of Lisp. And I should be talking like this when I'm talking about Lisp. <sighs> really? Maxima Lisp source code. Steelbank Common Lisp. Common Lisp. But I think that's a manager to actually, n it doesn't actually do anything by itself. So let's just do this. And I'll make a little note to myself that we're doing it. This, this is, this is going into the nightmarish territory. So we're, we're going in a language I don't understand, Maxima, and using another language I don't understand, Lisp, to add a feature that probably won't work. By the way, Emacs uses its own form of Lisp called eLisp. The Windows version of Emacs uses its own form of eLisp called Mint. And as the author very correctly points out, it is completely incomprehensible. I mean, we're going from something that's inherently incomprehensible um, into something Lisp, ELisp, and then Mint. So complete, 
complete insanity. Um, but now, I I don't even know if um, this is this is way beyond what I know. And we're having some more trouble here with the internet. Let me check OBS, which says we're still broadcasting very nicely. It's just the fucking chat. Well, OBS doesn't say that because it doesn't know about the chat. Okay. I might have to do something about this. I don't know what. I mean, if other people are using the internet. Yeah, that's looks like we actually lost internet connectivity there for a sec. Uh, but we're back now. Oh my god. I hate when that happens. Now this is, um... I have no idea what I just did. I love it. What does troper.lisp define? Motherfucker. We're now deep in territory that I don't understand. Files. Well, actually, just file manipulation. Oh, yeah, wow. Motherfucker. Now this is the kind of thing where you wonder if you could hire someone to do this. I mean, you, you probably could. Um, To definitely need to um, maxima maxima file seek. So the weird question is if we have things that are implemented in Lisp fairly well, like other other things in Lisp, like you know finding the nth prime number or something. Um, can we just sort of bring them into, um, bring them into, uh, into Maxima? God damn. This looks really fascinating, actually. Uh, but don't, don't understand a word of it. Okay. Uh, and of course there's some questions to why we would want to do any of this stuff because uh, there are other ways to do things okay um okay we did look at the pre-think example i did get the um it, it took up a lot of cpu but i did get the um the tiles are broken up. Many of them are blank, it turns out. Um, and I don't get the feeling that's not the right way to do it. And then why cruncher and... Okay. I think I think this has been a pretty bad stream, um, which is good. So thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.